Hi, my name is Phil. I like to talk about politics. And in this video, what I'd like to do is to discuss the latest statements by Chief Negotiators David Frost and Michelle Barnier, as well as to discuss what needs to happen by this Thursday in order for the EU summit that will be taking place then to signal general approval for the final stage or tunnel stage negotiations for a deal to take place in time for ratification by the end of the year. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So October, of course, really you would think is crunch time for a Brexit deal in order to get one in time, of course, if indeed Boris Johnson really wants a Brexit deal. And in terms of the statements at the end of last week by Frost and Barnier, I'll first of all say that at this stage, I'm going to take what both of them say with a huge pinch of salt. In fact, I'm going to take what anyone says with a large pinch of salt. Public statements, I think, at this stage of the talks could well be honest appraisals. Absolutely could be. Or they may be political posturing. You know, there was a great deal of both throughout the talks since February, of course. But there it was obvious what was going on. You know, David Frost, Boris Johnson and Michael Gove were consistently lying about what was in the withdrawal agreement. We could tell this because we could read the document for ourselves. So it wasn't a case of the EU presenting their proposals and the UK saying, no, that's not acceptable. And then the UK providing counter proposals and the EU saying, no, that's not acceptable. That, yeah, that could have been political posture and we wouldn't have known. What was happening instead is, for example, we knew that the level playing field concept had been agreed and signed by Boris Jen Johnson. So pretending that it didn't exist, pretending that the EU had only just come up with it this year was an obvious lie for anyone who'd read the agreement. We knew that the UK government weren't providing any proposals for fishing rights or on state aid or a host of other issues important to the EU because they weren't there. They hadn't been published. You know, we had over half a year of deliberate intransigence. So to know what was going on in the talks was fairly easy. There was not a lot. Less easy was knowing whether Boris Johnson was being deliberately crap in order to prevent a deal, but then just blame it on the EU, or whether he genuinely did want a deal, but didn't engage until the end for cretinous political reasons. Now it's trickier because the UK side has broken down some of their red lines. It has proposed something for fishing, which can be worked on. It said that, uh, you know, we're now willing to engage on state aid. Uh, we've accepted that there's going to be need to be a robust uh, dispute resolution mechanism in place. You know, the UK is finally moving towards the EU's position and the EU had already signalled flexibility on some issues some time ago. So when the EU said that the UK proposals weren't acceptable a few months ago, that wasn't political posturing. We knew that was a true position because the UK's position was in direct contradiction to the withdrawal agreement that we both sides had willingly entered into. Now it is less clear because the UK has engaged, possibly too late. We'll not know just yet. Uh, we can worry about that later. So to what extent the proposals are acceptable to the EU? We will not know for well, about three weeks. The EU side say there's still a long way to go. But let's say a deal were just in reach, you'd still expect them to say that anyway, because they are aiming to get the best deal for their side that they can. If you, if the UK provides a proposal, the EU look at it and go, oh yeah, we're happy with that, that's fine. You don't say, yeah, we're happy with that. You say, oh, well, I mean, yeah, it's, not, it's not quite what we're looking for. I'm not sure we can sell this. You know, is there, is there anything else you can do? Because that's just how it works. And they are very experienced in doing that, of course. So if Boris Johnson genuinely wants a deal, and I'm now fairly sure that he is, I can't be 100%, of course, uh, but given his recent movement, um, but if he is serious, then he basically has three days to get to a position that is on balance, in principle, acceptable to the EU member states. The summit on the 15th this week was set as a deadline by Boris Johnson. Now, we can ignore his deadlines because we've gone past those before and he's done nothing. But in this particular case, it's a bit more real, arguably, because if the EU Council don't signal their approval for these tunnel negotiations to go ahead, then Johnson says he will cancel further talks. Now, 
not entirely sure that is the case. Tunnel negotiations, by the way, who, for those who may not know, uh, are what happens right at the end of trade talks. So it's an intense period of negotiations to finalize a deal, to, to deal with all the niggling sticking points without any public statements, no media scrutiny. Uh, the political posturing is given the elbow because negotiators need to deal with smoothing over the edges to actually come out with a deal that is agreed by both sides. Of course, these talks are not taking place under normal circumstances because there are now actual deadlines. Normally, if talks need to take another few weeks or months or even years, then they can do so. But we've got a genuine deadline. If we don't finalise a deal in time for it to be ratified by both sides, and, and that process you know, takes a while for the EU because more stakeholders, then it can't be in place for the end of the transition period. Uh-oh, trouble. Now, by refusing to extend the transition period, Boris Johnson has created a probably unique situation in history because a country, the UK in this case, risks losing free trade with by far its largest and closest market overnight without anything else to fall back on. Normally, when you're negotiating something else, you've got your current arrangements to fall back on. We don't have that. And the EU know this, of course. Of course, sure, you know, they're willing to be flexible on certain areas. We know that. They've already made those moves. Understanding the political situation in the UK, the EU want to deal. And they know that an exact copy of their proposal, they produced a comprehensive proposal back in February. They knew that the UK couldn't accept it as it was, exactly as it was, because it wouldn't be acceptable back home. Boris Johnson needs to prove that he's got the EU to move on something. But the EU also know how weak the position Johnson has placed us in is, you know, because if there isn't a deal and Johnson walks away from the talks, as he's threatened to do, uh, if the tunnel talks don't start by the end of this week, then the UK will have no deal in place in January. Furthermore, there won't be any talks going ahead. That would mean that the UK will have to restart talks next year. That means we have to go to the EU cap in hand and say, can we please start the talks again? Whereas if we don't get a deal, but we still agree to carry on talks, at least those talks can be ongoing. And maybe you talk about getting a deal after a month of a no deal Brexit or two months or something like that. You know, without any current arrangements in place, the EU will be in an even stronger position to make demands because then British public opinion will turn much more against the government's Brexit position. I don't think Boris Johnson can manage that more importantly, I don't think Boris Johnson thinks he can manage that. But we are only a few days from finding out, so there's no need to speculate about that. It also needs to be borne in mind that although Barnier has shown flexibility in certain areas, he's not free to negotiate as he sees fit. You know, there are certain areas there's no point in the UK position being, being stubborn because he has a mandate from the European Parliament and, and from member states as well each of whom needs to approve any final deal. You know, the EU Parliament voted before summer, for example, on a series of, of actual red lines for Barnier. If he crosses any of them, they will not approve the deal. The EU Parliament have not changed that position. So Barnier would be wasting his time to cross those lines. So he can't do that. Uh, Johnson will need to understand that. Similarly, our closest EU neighbours, who are the most invested in this deal, have also not yet softened their position any further in the past few weeks. So from the UK's point of view, Boris Johnson just needs a win. He needs the EU to visibly move on something that can be reported in the papers. And it could be almost anything. It could be absolutely anything. So that the Brexit papers can boast about how the EU has folded and Johnson is a, a negotiating god. And, uh, and then he can sell the largely EU-dominated deal to the British public. Now, given the recent rhetoric, those statements by Frost and, and Barnier, um, you'd think this will be on fishing. It makes sense. David Frost described fishing as the last major barrier to a deal. The EU were a little bit perplexed about that. And they go, there's loads of things still in the way. But I think this is a political statement. So what they're going to try and do is say to the British public, look, we've almost got a deal. We've agreed pretty much everything. Uh, we just need to sort fishing out. They've been a bit stubborn on fishing. Not to worry, we've got it all in hand. Then they get the EU to move a bit on fishing rights. Um, claim they stared the EU down. 
won their game of chicken and hail it as a great victory. Told you we'd sort it out. They were being a bit stubborn, but you know, we faced them down like we said we would. We're not for moving. We won out in the end. And it also doesn't even require the EU to move much because like conservatives don't care about fishing. You know, remember the Tory Brexiteer MP who pretended to go fishing but had no line on her rod? That pretty much sums up their relationship with fishing. They don't even care enough about it to properly set up for a fishing photo opportunity. And I think, you know, it's quite likely that the UK would fold on absolutely everything else just so long as they get their negotiating triumph on fishing to get on the front pages. What hardline backbench Brexiteers think is another matter. Do not know that at the moment. But from Boris Johnson's point of view, he just needs his, his win that he can sell to the papers. The question is, how much movement can they get on fishing? Because President Macron, how much can he afford of France? He needs to show that he has stood firm in the interests of French fishermen, of course. So basically, there's what, four days to unlock the situation before the EU summit. Um, if it looks like all the major issues are resolved by then, then presumably the council will signal its approval and the tunnel negotiations begin for a deal to emerge at the end of October or the very first few days of November. And once that process starts, then it will be simply a case of wait and see. We won't get any real information when that process begins on how things are going and if anyone tries to claim otherwise, they will be lying. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.